Welcome back to The Witching Hour. This is Diana, your host, and I just want to welcome to the studio with me now my very special guest. His name is Chester Green. Hello, Mr. Green. Hello. Uh, Thanks wh- for having me. You're welcome, of course. Mm-hmm. It's, um, it's, it's really exciting to have such a local, someone so connected, connected to local history here in the studio with me. And I, I'm very thrilled uh, as well to be speaking to a, a notary because I have a stack of papers. Before I leave today, I I would like to have notarized if you could just take a look at those once again before I leave the studio after sure. we get through the business. You know, I don't have my stamp with me, my official stamper with the seal oh. from the state of Ohio, but That's I will I will make a special trip out to your home uh, tomorrow Please. if you'd like and I will I will notarize all your all your papers that you, you would notarized. be my first visitor of the year. Oh, of the to year. Me, yes, of my home. You don't have a lot of people to your home? It used to be a wild party place, but no, not so much why anymore. Not a, why no more parties? Well, the farm animals are gone, and farm animals used to really bring people in, you know, the children and their parents, and we how, would have really How large of a piece of property do you live on? 400 acres. Right here in Bowling Green? Mm-hmm, yes, Oh, right. must be on the outskirts of town. On the outskirts, yes. We have windmills out there. Oh, oh mm-hmm. I know where you're located. Yes. yes. I don't even need directions to you home know. then tomorrow. That's right. Mm-hmm. So Swing you, on by. Sure. So I think I know the yes. farmhouse you're talking about mm-hmm. on the outskirts of town. It's quite a lovely uh, building. Thank you. Um, how long have you lived there? My entire life, actually, yes. Were you, you were born there? I was born there uh, in the tub. We have the claw feet uh, tubs, which were, you know, very popular at the time. And now I understand they're, they're making, becoming, they're, they're making a comeback. A comeback. Mm-hmm. We've had a lot of, you know, the youth out uh, looking at the Restoration hardware. Home. Yes. Reclaimed um, mm-hmm. urban elements. Yes. Pottery barn, all that That's stuff. That's right. We mm-hmm. actually have the original hardware. Oh. They're restoring the hardware that I have. That's how old my home is. It's oh. very nice and delicate. So this is a family home. That it's a family living. home, yes. goes back for many, many generations of the Greens. Um, you know, we are in Bowling Green, as we are. you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And my name is Chester Green, so we'll put two and two together here. You know, you're a smart cookie. You are a descendant of the original this is settlers true. of this is Bowling true. Green, Ohio. Yes, of Bowling Green. Big bowling fans, <laughs> okay. actually. And they they emigrated here from where? Um, from uh, uh, Norway, actually. Oh, so you yes. are Norwegian. Yes, Norwegian, and we updated our last name. Um, it used to be Green with an E on the end, but that was controversial, so we came over here and we removed the E. What year uh, did your did your ancestors settle Bowling Green? This would have been early 1500s. <gasps> wow, yes. that's really early. Which is amazing because we weren't a country yet here, right. but they were here and ready to go, huh. prepared and, How and did excited they, to they start. They were they they settled a farm in the 16th century in Ohio. Settled a farm and you know cobbled a a, a clawfoot tub and, and the rest was history. Now, I have heard, I don't know if this is true, that, but there have been some rumblings around town that the Green family of Bowling Green yes. is connected to the serpent mounds that are found throughout the state of Ohio, which some people have linked to paranormal activity. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a dark part of our history, but I'm here to open up that book tonight. So I'm ready so to go. So let's flip this to the rare. first page. Let's do it. Yes. The first line is, it was a dark and stormy night. That's how your family's that's, story begins. That's how it's, it, like so many stories of families in this area, dark and stormy night. Which, based on your weather report, I understand we may have a dark and stormy night tomorrow. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's my favorite mm-hmm. film and I just wanted to squeeze it in. I know it's so ridiculous. Meatballs. <laughs> Speaking of meatballs. The oldest restaurant in Bowling Green, Ohio, yes. as everyone knows, is the Meatball. The Meatball restaurant, that restaurant. is downtown mm-hmm. on Main Street. Yes. Your family has guarded that secret, the secret recipe for mm-hmm. their meatballs for hundreds of years now. Yes. Do you care to tell our listening audience some of the secret ingredients that are in, is in that meatball it's recipe? It's meat and balls. <laughs> That is the recipe. I'm blowing the lid off everything in my family history tonight. I know that I'm feeling some of the heat from the sage and the spirits, but I'm blowing it, it a little off. It's it. very hot in the studio with it all is. the it's candles, mm-hmm. the candles, the burning of the sage. The the equipment kicks off quite a bit. Bit of warmth. It does. Yeah. Now, 
what is your connection to Bowling Green State University? We're on the campus, you know. We are on the campus. We're, bu- we're broadcasting campus. from the campus within mm-hmm. the Cooling Center. The Cooling, and it's very cool in here. Not temperature-wise, as we mentioned, extremely hot. Just like a vibe. It's a cool vibe. Very cool vibe. Mm-hmm. Do kids still use that? Definitely. Okay. Wait, let's hang on a second. Let's ask Sky. Do kids do still still say cool vibes? Uh, yeah. Oh. Awesome. Sky says yes, and she's young, so. Yeah, she's hip to the scene. Is it? That's another thing they say. Uh, not as much. Is it still hip to be square? <laughs> Do they sorry. not say hip to the scene? Oh, that's a hip that's to a the sh- scene. Oh. Mm. No, what? no. What is? What? Wait a minute. Hold on, Sky. What's some other slang that that Chester and I don't know that you can tell us that kids use? Um. Mm, well. Vibes, Steph's for sure. Vibes? Okay. Vibes, vibes only. Do you know what an op is? No, what's an op? No. It's like two letters. An opportunity? Is that what it means? Well, you would think. You would hope. But no. <laughs> but In today's pessimistic society, an op is Ooh. somebody you don't like. Somebody who's opposed to you. <gasps> oh, how, how, use it in a sentence for us. That guy was mean. He's such an op. Oh, wow. I've actually heard that. I heard that earlier tonight at Kroger. I thought they oh, were being someone kind. Say it about someone you. Someone called me an op. They said that exact sentence. Was it you? <laughs> no, I was it you? I'm just kidding. You're delightful. Oh, wow. But yes, yeah, so apparently they didn't care for me or my, you know, my tone. What other slang do you have for a guy? Mm. <clears throat> um, what's a what's a, an attractive person? Um, well, you could still just say uh, foin, perhaps. Oh, foin. Foin. Is it's that foin? Okay, so no, it's fine, but, but you're play on fine. Foin. But you're adding an O in front of the I foin. in the word. Oh, I understand. Kind of yeah. like noise, right? Yeah. That's foin. noise. Noise. Mm. Okay. Mm. Why? Why are the young people adding extra vowels to the words? Um. Well, you know, The Sopranos is, is has had had a comeback. You know, the New Jersey oh. 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 You yes. know, I'm not familiar with. I don't. I don't no, know. I've never seen the program. Neither have I. It's yeah. a little too violent for me. I don't. Like Do that. people That's still right. say for shizzle? Mm. Is that a thing? No, I I don't think so. I haven't. You'd be an op to say that. Like I think. Chester, could you? Uh, excuse me. I think you'd be an op if you said that. You know, well, I, I feel like I feel like maybe we're then. opening up some bad territory. We're opening Let's up get the back bad the vibes are they're decreasing. Right. Right. Let's put a lid on this one. What is your connection to Bowling Green State University, Mr. Green? Oh yes, that was a good question. One I was trying to avoid, as you as you may have noticed, throwing you off that scent. Well, even though I invited you into the studio, I'm not gonna listen. You're not just gonna get softball questions from me. I'm gonna come at you with some hard hard hitting questions. I've heard your show before. It's very hard and it's very hitting and it's it's quite fantastic as well. So my connection to Bowling Green State University is that I'm currently sitting in a building here on Bowling Green State University, and that's but it. But there's much more to the story, yeah. though. We're going in here again? It's Well, your family has quite a legacy in town. <sighs> All right, here we go. It was a dark and stormy night, like so many nights in my family. And... Um, the university, and really the term university wasn't even around yet, but we sought higher education, as many did in that time frame. Is, are we talking, is this the 18th century now? We've jumped ahead to the 19th okay. century. Right. Yes, we are now moving ahead. We've thrown the E back on to our last name. Oh, We're wow. We're now green with E. And what precipitated green that with move? Envy. What 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 would cause that change? We just wanted to have a little bit of pride uh, in in our name again, mm-hmm. and also the hoodlums were beating us badly. And what what kind of hoodlums were around in the 19th century in Bowling Green, Ohio? Well, we had the Orange family. Oh. Many families here had colors for last names. The Purple which was Gang surprised. in the Detroit. Purple they gang, all, they came all the down whiskey, here. Yes, right, from they Detroit. ran the whiskey and they ran it through us. It was, it was like a crime syndicate of color mm-hmm. families with last names that were primary colors. Yes, exactly. There was blue, right, red, green, yellow, white. For those that, that may not know colors, we're just right. There's, you know, there's an easy way to remember them all. Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a childhood friend of mine as well. Was Was named Roy G. Biv. What kind of is? Was he happy that his name became synonymous with all the colors of the rainbow? He hated it. Oh, that's a shame. He did not care for expressive colors of any sort. He loved black, white, tan, 
gray. So he was a minimalist. He was a minimalist, yes. Okay. Very much so. Well, yeah. Also one of the most brilliant minds I've ever met. In what discipline or area or topic of study? Pizza. Oh, he knew a lot about he pizza. He knew how to make a mean pizza Did pie. Did he know how to eat it as well? No, oh, he was a tremendous eater. Yes, he won many a contest back in the 19th century. And, and we're still talking about pizza because I don't really think it came to Ohio until the 20th. Some people would argue it's never made it to Ohio, but... Uh, oh. He, he was eating you pizza. You got me again. Boy, I try to cover up, but you're hard-hitting with it. You are full of it. contradictions, yes, Mr. Green. You're trying to fool yes, me. I, I, I won't be fooled. I'm trying to avoid the university question, as you can imagine. Yes. Let's get back to it, then. Okay. What is your connection to Bowling Green State University? It's a dark and stormy night. And the Bowling Green State University, well... It was run by another man at that time who had no relation to my family, the Green family. Previously, the green with the E, then no E, then E again. It came back. Much like the channel E has made many a resurrection. University. (sighs) So this person, these are really good mics. I know this is a difficult topic for you to address, but our listening audience really wants you to finally, once and for all, put the rumors to rest, get your, get it off of your chest, relieve yourself of this terrible secret. He beat my father and took the deed to the university. That's the truth. This man who stole my father's dignity, subsequently my dignity. And the dignity of everyone in my family. That's so much dignity. It's a lot of dignity. And all of it was stolen? It was all stolen. 100% of the dignity. 100% of the dignity was stolen. So the Green family was dignity free. We we were, we had no dignity left. Okay. All we had was our name and our farm. And and you didn't even have the E at the end. And we didn't have the E. At this point, we didn't have the E. I can see why you would take it back as a way to reclaim some of that dignity that you lost. Hard-hitting and insightful. Thank you very much. Mm. I'm going to take a little sip of my drink, if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. It's a family punch. I feel like you're really stalling here. And... Once again, the listening audience wants finally. They want to hear more about they the want university this story. This to be put to rest. Okay. It was not a dark and stormy night. I made that up. Was this, it was a sunny afternoon. Yeah, it was a beautiful right. day. Actually, mm-hmm. it was uh, eleven thirty a.m. I was walking my dogs, and it was just glorious on Main Street. It was fall around this time of the year. Uh, uh, leaves still in the trees, so I'm making a little flustered here. Yellow leaves. I remember it. And getting the call, we had rotary phone backpacks. I know, I know where you were going. You were going to ask. I could tell where you were going. How did I have a phone? My, the Green family was ahead of the curve. We had to wind it up, and I got the alert that my father had been beaten, and the deed was gone. This was pre-university. I believe there was um, a community college here at the time. It was not a full-fledged university on this where we currently sit which is now the Coolin Center, as we've established. Right. At 8.35, Sunday. Yeah, we don't need to October take a break 30th. for a while. I'm, I'm, just I'm just establishing the situation <laughs> for drama purposes. So my father was beaten, the deed was gone, and um, this person decided to use our name to start this university. His name was Gary State. <laughs> and... He stole our family name now. You are, mis- well you are willfully mis- mispronouncing his name. It was Stott. It was Stott with umlauts and two A's. Umlauts all over the place. Mm-hmm. That's what I remember most. It's the umlauts. That's what I wake up to in the middle of the night. Umlauts! And he stole. He stole it. He stole my father's last name and my mother's maiden name, which is Bowling. Janet Bowling. But we didn't have a G. It it ended in apostrophe, which was very strange for the time. The university didn't didn't like the way that that looked on T-shirts. Ball and green. Right, so they changed it to... Ball and green stopped with amulets. Right, and they thought that that was too European. Universitai. Right. Was how university ended. Right. Ball and green stopped universitai. Mm -hmm. 
So they made it much more readable, easy to staple in Green State University, and that's how it came to come to pass. And, when and I'm here to reclaim my birthright. It's, you're going. You feel like you should ascend to the to the position to the of president. Of well, the, it's University. president. That's the title. You, you, I will have a throne though when I'm president. Okay. <laughs> and you, immediately throne. you want to assume yes. this control p- position. Okay. That's part of the reason I have the stack of notaries. Oh, I see. For the university. You know what? It might be a conflict of interest for me to both to notif- to certify. Notarize. You are an employee of this campus. Well, no, this is community-supported radio, so I'm just a volunteer here. I show up, and I do the show. Are you a follower of Gary Stott? I'm, I'm not a follower of Gary Stott. I just happen to know okay. his place in the story um, uh, of the university's history. So, But, I mean, it would, be a, it would be a conflict of interest in that, you know, they let me use the studio. I don't know if that would put me in a position that, you know, I couldn't take sides, if that's what you want to call it. So I have these stacks of papers <laughs> now that I must take and find another notary. You're well, not coming over tomorrow, is what I'm hearing. I exist within a network of notaries, so if I can't do oh. it, I'll just, I'll just get someone else to do it. Or I'll use my other stamp that has a fake name on it. That one is registered. It's still registered to me, but I do it under an alias. So. And that alias is? Anastasia, Anastasia Beaverhausen. Anastasia Beaverhausen? Yes. That's my, my other name on the stamp for when I notarized I believe I was people. matched with someone unhinged by that name. Oh, well, that's <laughs> funny you should mention that. <laughs> my only that. match appears to be bogus. I am a woman of a certain age who is also single and looking for a relationship. So you may have seen me on you know a site or an app um, if, if you are also on them. Sure. I have a problematic dating history let's yes. just put it that way perhaps some of them will call tonight i have um there's someone who's in love with me um who calls regularly my ex mm. has called because some of the guests that he that i've had on he's interested in it's just a whole big thing and yeah. it's a whole lot of drama that i don't even want to talk about now but i'd be happy to go out with for a drink with you after the show and fill you in on all the details absolutely miss beaverhausen i would be delighted Okay. How, what? How did your family change the direction of the university when they assumed control? Well, at that time, it was no farmers allowed. Oh wow! What a policy in in agricultural Ohio to that not was, allow farmers into the university. That was Gary Stotts doing. Oh, he was okay. digging it into my daddy. Oh, I see. Yeah, mm. much the way he dug palace intrigue laid into him. Mm-hmm. And what was your family's idea of what the university should provide? You know, our current president says that the university is a public university for the public good. Yes. And he means that. And how did your family um, think that, what did they think the role of the university should play in the local person's life? What my family thought it should mm-hmm. play, not Gary Stott's warped mm-hmm. version. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't believe, we thought it was it was going to be farmers only, is what we were we're looking for and we were going to specialize in in the writings and the teachings of you guessed it the farmer's almanac oh we took a lot of pride in building yeah. that almanac for years did you have um tracts yes. of land on your 400 acre farm where students came out and you know raised crops or, or livestock and the dead oh what was that class uh, like well, there was a lot of dead. Was that necromancy? Was that the cl- necromancy 101? Yes, necromancy 101, mm-hmm. um, followed by um, y- how to talk to a necromancy 102. Oh. You learn how to do it. You know, because I'm a practitioner of the dark arts, mm-hmm. I have unearthed the syllabi from necromancy 101 and necromancy 102. And I have read through them, and I have culled the important lessons yes. and uh, read all the texts that were assigned back then. And th- they were quite helpful in me understanding, you know, what I would say is my um, connection to, you know, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I remember that from your profile. Uh, it's on there, too, yes. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes. It really won me over. Mm. And um, But anyway, back, back to you. Yes. What are your plans for where you want to take this university? in this new century 
Well, part of the reason I'm here tonight is I want to call on some family members to get their inspiration. We'd love to bring it more into the paranormal realm, make it something that transcends um, dimensions, universe. Astral planes. Astral planes, astro helicopters. Mm. Pretty much anything astro, astro dogs. That's what we want Astro-turf. to do. Astroturf. Astroturf, naturally, yes. Which we are already seeing. And, you it's know, a, it's a whole untapped uh, yes. uh, dimension of agriculture mm-hmm. studies. Astro Lounge mm. will be played nonstop. Of course, Smash Mouth's most famous album, that was All Star, was the, the lead single, but really the entire catalog and every track was fantastic. You don't have fantastic. to tell me. Of yes. course, no. One of my favorites, mm-hmm. yes. I'm actually really good friends with the front man of Smash Mouth. Oh, is he still alive? Yes, I don't remember his name. He doesn't leave much of an impact on your life, but we're close. <laughs> How close could you be to someone that, whose name, whose first name you do not know? Just something about his face. We just sort of recognize in that sure. way. I'm like, hey, op. Oh, look, you're already using the, yep. the new slang That's that Sky taught us. Right. Uh, you're fine. <laughs> Jerry. So, so you're so I don't know, Jerry. You you're here tonight yes. because it's Seance Sunday mm-hmm. the, and it's a very powerful, probably the most powerful Seance Sunday because I'm it's the night it. before Halloween. Yes, that's right. And you want to contact your dead ancestors for what type of guidance? I, I, I want to get some guidance on curriculum and how I uh, ascend to the throne here. Okay. Yes. Um I don't want to speak to Gary Stott. No. I know that he has a very strong presence on this university, and he can sometimes interfere in these seances. I don't want to see Gary come in here, okay? So just make that clear right now, you and your friend here. I don't want to hear anything from Gary. I don't want any of that here. I want to talk to my great aunt. Okay. Because um, she was the one who I held the most, you know, connection to as a youth. Um... My friend Roy G. Biv. Roy, if you're listening, I'm sorry. And I love you. We don't need to hear from him, but I just hope he gets that message. Can you pass that on through? Of course. I will use my powers to communicate with Mr. Biv. Use your powers for good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. Mr. Biv. Well, but you know, I do I do need to, you know, say this disclaimer. Yeah. When I once the seance starts mm-hmm. and I start to channel the dead because I'm a medium, yes. I somehow, you know, no, I can not always control what comes out of my mouth or m- maybe even some of the movements I make because I am I have left my body at that point and my body is inhabited by other beings from the other world. So physically, they take over, and I'll be looking Absolutely. at your face right now, your delicate face, and it will be coming out the the the, the spirits. The Hopefully not Gary. St- the hole, the mm-hmm. talking hole. Mm-hmm. Right. Hopefully not Gary Stott. No, I hope I hope not. No, Roy G. Pip. No. Um, but my great aunt is. Um, and what is her name? Her name is Gertrude. Great. We called her Gert. Gertie. Gertie. Dirty. Just Gertie. Gert. Well, some people called her Dirty Gert. in the skirt? Dirty Gertie. Okay. She would get Gert in the skirt. Okay. Which isn't what you think it might be. Well, I don't know what you think it is, but it's not that. In the 19th century, in s- this, that slang was very <laughs> vulgar. That was some very vulgar slang. Hey, Chester, you getting Gert in the skirt? Did many people ask you that? Yes, yes, they would say that. And what was your that. answer? I thought they were being derogatory to my great aunt Gertrude, and oh, okay. I beat them to a pulp. Oh. Actually, I had Roy G. Bibb do that. He was very handy. He's quite fists. a colorful man. Yes, he's a very yeah. colorful man. You're sharp as a tack. But yes, Gert and the skirt. We, she goes by Gert. Okay. Or Trudy. Oh, Trudy. Okay. Yes. Also Samantha. And you're, you're hoping to, to gain wisdom from your dead relatives? Yes, and how I should structure the curriculum. Do we bring back the Necroism 101, Necroism 102? Do we learn to raise the dead? Mm-hmm. You know, do we, do we bring back the basic core of what this university once was, which was how to milk a cow, was how we started this, to be farmers, to learn how to take care of the animals. This is what we would like to know how to do. And then, yes, how can I ascend to the throne? What is the best path? And if they have any suggestions on how to build the throne, one thing that wasn't passed down to me is I'm not very handy. Living on a farm, you, you're not good no. with a nail and hammer? No, I'm, I'm very good with computers. I'd wait a long time to be good with those. 
uh, if you don't mind my asking, how old are you, sir? I do mind. Oh, okay. Well, we can just... It, we, I'm 47. Just, okay. Well, you know, you can also pretend I didn't ask. I'm so... I'm very sorry. Stupid. I didn't mean no. to embarrass you at all. No, I'm not embarrassed. You I'm don't proud look of my 47, age. by the way. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yes, I do a lot of Pilates. I'm noticing I that... I keep it tender and tight. Well, I... You you, you do, and I'm I've not, been asked if I have girt in a skirt. Do, so do you? That's a little private. I'm noticing that tattoo on your right bicep, and yes. I can't quite make it out. Um, what What is that tattoo? Do you mind me asking, what is that tattoo, sir? That's Roy G. Biff. That's, oh, it's, and it's, there's a rainbow there's behind him. There's a rainbow him. behind him. It's quite a double meaning, isn't mm -hmm. it? Okay. Yes. There He's, is a call on the line, just so we know. Oh, okay. Oh, we have a call. Sure. Thank you. Uh, WBGU FM, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Roderick von Busker Stat. No relation. Uh, hello, Roderick. Uh, I have a I have a question about necromancy. Go ahead. I believe I believe that it involves necks. Well, it can involve. Can you necks. explain the connection necks. of necks to necromancy? Sure. Do I have to explain this to a stat? You don't have to. No relation. You can, no relation. He says he's no relation. No, okay. He says he's he just no relation. changed that slight a pronunciation, but whatever. Go ahead. I don't. I don't he want wants to, to know it. the connection between necromancy and necks. Do you, are you prepared to answer the question? It involves necks. Well, yes. I, I know, as a practitioner of the dark mm -hmm. arts, that the connection between necromancy and necks is that if you are trying to raise the dead of someone, uh, you're gonna, if they don't have a neck, their head is not going to be raised. Therefore, you are going to reanimate a decapitated corpse, Correct. and things are not going to end well for you. Believe me, 4th of July, seven, 1978, and that was not a good time for me. So, a wild time, huh? Yeah. Does that answer your question, Roderick? I've been doing wrong. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, to be continued. Yes, thanks for a call, smart guy. Thank you, Roderick, for calling. I don't care Feel what he says. Feel free to call again anytime. He, Roderick's gone. That had Gary <coughs> Stott written all over it. You know, you might be right. I don't right. care. There's no way for us to know. Like, the, the, we can't we can't verify the identity of our callers. You're a notary. Don't you have powers beyond comprehension? I do. I do have. I have the power to notarize documents that you're going to take to the bank or to your insurance company. But the identity and authenticity of our callers, they can just say whoever they want to say they are. There's no way for us to know. Sky's not a brain surgeon, and I'm she's not. she's not she doesn't have telepathy. I was a business major. <laughs> there, are you a notary? Do you, do you uh, have notary I'm not skills? A, I'm not a notary, but uh, funnily oh. enough, I do have some uh, necromancy <laughs> experience. Uh, really? Tell us more. Tell well, um, okay. In, in college, I took uh, one one class relevant um, statistics for necromancy. Was that a research class? Um, yeah, there was a little bit. Why would you... Uh, okay, so why weren't they focusing more on the methods of necromancy and more on the data collection? Mm, it's about profit, you know. Oh, mm. boy, capitalism ruins everything. Doesn't yeah. it relate to what stroidal? Grade, yeah. What grade did you get in your necromancy class? Um, or maybe it's a st statistics class. What department was it offered through? Um, you know, that's a good question. Uh... This was a math course. It was statistics or an occult studies course for necromancy. I hmm. um yeah, it might have been um, dual. You know. Oh, so you as are as fulfilled a requirement. Yeah, absolutely. It mm. sounds like you're going fantastic. So they are incorporating some sort of necromancy into the curriculum as we speak, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And you would yeah. like to see more of that? I would like to see more. I, honestly, this is news to me. I didn't know there was any, but let alone statistics to intro into necromancy. This is great. You know, they now have a whole graduate. They have a whole degree program here just for tourism and leisure yeah. management. Really? Yeah. Actually, that's the department that this was in. Okay, that makes that sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Very yes. random, but yeah. Yeah, but you, random yet it makes complete sense. It's that's yeah, kind of necromancy. Yeah. yeah. Did mm -hmm. you mention that computers help you run your family business? Yes, yes, and I initiated them, I, and I was the one who wired them and programmed them, and that's how we run my family business, the meatball restaurant as well. Did you want to plug the meatball restaurant downtown? What well, since you're, we have a long list of sponsors. They've been, we, they've been. 
we have to beat them off with a stick. We have so many people trying to subsidize the show. Sure. Mm-hmm. But I'll give you free airtime right now if you want to just do a, a commercial. Uh, Can I use an Italian stereotyped voice? Are you, well, but you're Norwegian. I'm Norwegian, but um, that's kind of what I've known for in my ads, or do you prefer me to keep it straight? Well, I would prefer you to... Why don't you do it in Norwegian accent? Okay, Norwegian accent. Can you get give me a chance to be in my scene here? Sure. Here, as I go through my method? I bet you've taken an improv class. Well, you'd be right. Welcome to the Norwegian Southern Norwegian Meatball Restaurant. Stop on down Wednesday is Meatball Night. That's where we specialize in our meatball subs. We have smashed meatballs. We have meatballs on a plate. We have meatballs on noodles, which is known as, you guessed it, spaghetti and meatballs. Stop on down to the Southwestern Norwegian Meatball Restaurant, downtown Bowling Green, just off Wooster and Main Street. Check it out, and you will be there, and you will be full. Thank you so much for that. We are definitely going to replay that yeah, on future shows. For sure. Please I, do. You know what? It is one of my, it's probably my favorite restaurant in town. Thank you. Sky, have you been there? I have. Uh, I usually go to Wooster's Roosters first mm-hmm. and then uh, take a trip over um, to Pose yeah. Crows. And Pose then, Crows and then. And then mm-hmm. the uh, Southwestern Norwegian Meatball Place, which I for, forgot to mention, Meatball Mondays. Oh. How did we come up with that one? I buy know. one, get one free. It's buy one, get one free free that's mm-hmm. right just one meatball one but one, one meatball fits in the palm of your hand you know we should yeah. have we should have a, a bowling green food festival we where should. all the all of our favorite restaurants in town offer a little a kind of a sampling of their food so there'd be roosters Wooster's Roosters, where they have the strongest thighs and the sturdiest beaks. Yes, they do. And then Pose Crows for any of your COVID needs. Uh, c- Corvid, sorry. Yeah. Ooh, that's a terrible mistake to make. We don't want to go there. No, don't. I've done that before mm-hmm. on Hinge. Hmm. There's mm-hmm. one place I don't want to invite, and I think you know which one I'm talking about. Oh, no. Stotts I Brats. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. They no. will not be no. there. Mm-mm. I will have no members of the Stotts family there. They are banned from the food festival. We don't need for that kind lo- of from meat. From now until the, the end of time. That's right. Um, well, uh, we are going to take a, a just a short break right here. All righty. When we come back, we are going to get down to our seance, and we're going to try and reach your great aunt Gertrude. Yes, great. And we're going to try and really help you figure out what you. what your plan is for the university going forward once you ascend to the throne. I appreciate. It. And uh, we'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to The Witching Hour. It is the evening before Halloween, and so that means it's Seance Sunday. We are going to have a seance in the studio here uh, at WBGUFM, community-supported radio, community-supported seance. And in in studio with me tonight is Chester Green. Hello. He is from, um, he is the descendant uh, one of the descendants of the oldest family in Bowling Green, the founding family of Bowling Green. That's they good. came here in the, fifth, you said the 16th century. In 15, what was the year? Uh, 1503. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Long before and we founded were, their farm. Yeah, they were all, here. All the way from Norway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I still have the clawfoot tub from 1503. Right. As well as a clawfoot toilet. I didn't know they made those. Yes, those are very rare. Very rare. You, if you, if you call up your local restoration hardware, they will pay you a pretty penny for that clawfoot toilet. That. Yeah, I think I could make some money there. You know why it's so rare? Why they didn't, they didn't, you know, stick? Why the stench? Oh, the gap there where you could see it all go through. It just was like, why are we doing this? Let's just put it directly to to the floor. And let me tell you, the stench in my bathroom is tremendous. But, but you have indoor plumbing now, right? I mean, I know there are some yes, many homes in Bowling do. Green that don't, but you have indoor plumbing? Indoor plumbing, but again, with the clawfoot toilet that just kind of keeps it at like an inch above, if you mm-hmm. know, you know, with kinda a clawfoot toilet, it defeats the purpose. Defeats the purpose cause you go, Why don't you just have a bucket? You, exactly. Right. A bucket, yeah. It's almost like having a porta potty in your house, because oh. you do your business and it just goes right through a hole in the floor. I mean, well, that's the way toilets pipe. work now, kind of, but there's a pipe connecting it out to the yeah. street. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's, it, it's quite, you know, fetching to see, especially paired with the clawfoot tub. It's, mm. it's a beautiful sight, but again, the stench is horrific How in that bathroom. How old is your farmhouse? Um, since 1503, when my family moved here. It's wow. the same wood. Yes, oh, so it wasn't made with, one. like, s- stones and, like, mud and, like, No, a, we a used the hut. stones in society to, to beat people, to so we didn't have a lot of stones to build the homes. What were the crimes that they would be stoned for? Well, lying, 
Mm -hmm. would be one. You don't lie. Sure. And we could tell. If you lie, you deserve to be stoned. You Mm -hmm. deserve to be stoned. Walking backwards. Uh, Was that popular? Was it a popular trend in the 16th century? So long before the dark times, walking backwards was pretty hip. You were not thought to be an op if you walked backwards. Long before the moonwalk... We were we were doing it here, but it wasn't allowed. It seems like a very risky thing to do. That you know, people might get the idea that you're in consort with you know the devil. The devil, yes, mm-hmm. and this is why you were stoned, you know, repeatedly, right. right in the middle of the streets, wearing your clothes backwards. To pretty much anything backwards was not allowed. Well, it's I mean, it goes ho- hand in hand, you know, backwards thought, mm-hmm. backwards motion, backwards clothing. Yep, and then a backwards <clears throat> beating soon followed. They would stones. come up from behind you and yes. they would they would never to your never to your face. No. no. Never. That's the only way to fight. Well, hit people from behind. Sure. That's the way I was taught. So are you ready for this seance? Let's do it, baby. Okay. I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that. It's you know, I'm single so I don't take You're offense. You're very foin. Sexual harassment is unwelcome attention and quite frankly I'm glad that I'm glad that you broke the tension because our our, our sexual tension was becoming uncomfortable. It was keep yeah, it was very tight in here. Yes. Tender it's tight and, tight. and warm. I was going to say warm. that in the yeah. sage. It's, yeah. it's a lot. It's, it's a whole erotic atmosphere. Mm. Boiling hot. Like my bathroom, but we don't have the stench here. Right. There is, however, a bucket in the corner. If at any time during the seance you feel loose. ill, you can use it for whatever. Either way. Either either side. Mm-hmm. Right, either. Okay. Let. Sky, is there anything we need to know about how to keep the equipment safe during the seance from spirits? Um, well, if you think anything's going to get especially wet, um, <laughs> that's going to be a problem. Other than that, go for it. Okay. I like that. I've been keep, uh, it, <laughs> keep it dry as a bone. Mm-hmm. You got it, sister. Yeah. Otherwise, it's seance proofed. All okay. right. Mm. All right. Well, Let's rip into this yeah. like a bag of Doritos. Okay. So what we do is we all close our eyes, mm-hmm. and we concentrate on the person that we want to contact from the other realm, and we welcome them, in this, in them into this realm. We all, mm, yeah, we all start to... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. Is that? That's for teenage girls. We don't, so we don't use oh, that one. Oh, okay. <clears throat> there are age-appropriate um, uh, practices for seance. We don't use that one. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's usually mm-hmm. what I do with my friends, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. There's just there was a flutter. The lights, the candles are fluttering as if mm. someone opened a door and there was a gust of wind. That's the first sign that that the seance is successful and that oh they're, the Lord. spirits are occupying the studio. Does anyone feel, oh, do you feel that chill? Do you feel the chill in the air? I do. I feel so urge oh. to get to that bucket. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Speaking of the bucket, does, that, does everyone smell that smell? Mm. I smell it. You it smell like it? my bathroom. Yeah, exactly. This is, her. this is how you know that the, the spirits are being conjured up from, from the underworld. Oh my Lord. And that's, that's that smell. So, oh we are in full seance mode at, at this point. Oh, goodness <coughs> gracious. Okay. So, and if you could repeat just a few times the sure. name of the of your great aunt. Gert in the skirt. 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 Ah, sorry, I'm nervous. Gert. Chester. Chester, is that you? Aunt Gertrude? It's me, darling. It's, it's your Aunt Gertrude. Oh, my, it's been so long. Chester, I remember your beautiful face as a young boy. It's so wonderful to see you again. I never thought I'd have the chance. Thank you so much, Aunt Gertrude. You look <laughs> you look just as I remembered you. I was quite a fashioning young woman. Yes, you were. And I, you know, I was Miss Bowling Green of 1897. Where I remember that I remember that uh, roast we had, the pig roast. We roasted all those pigs after we slaughtered them. Mm-hmm. We slit their throats and then we bled them out from the. Brutally, it's so glorious. And then we roasted their skin. It got so crispy. I my fingers were so greasy from all the pig fat. Oh. I have such many wonderful memories as being from one of the most powerful families in Bowling Green. Mm-hmm. I'm. 
you disturbed my other world slumber. Why have you called me here today, Chester? How I, do you need my help? I'm, I'm sorry, Aunt Gertrude. I just, I'm, so, I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'm happy to help, but if you could speed it along, because the season premiere of season two of White Lotus is on HBO tonight, and I don't want to miss my stories. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. You get HBO. <laughs> Of, we get all the streaming services in the other, in the underworld. Really? We well, we no, we don't get Paramount Plus. You still have to pay extra for that one. But we get the standards of Netflix and HBO Max and Hulu, and um, we even get Apple Plus because of the deal that Steve Jobs made with naturally with yes. the Dark Lord. But mm. yes, I spend most of my time either doing my Sudoku puzzles or watching my stories on TV. There's lots of kitty cats that sit in my lap that I pet. So it's, it's a wonderful break for me to come up to the surface and see a lovely face of my great-grandson, I nephew. I can help but notice that you said up the surface. I'm, I was sent to hell. Oh my goodness. Well, that explains why you don't have Paramount Plus. Yellowstone, well, of course, would be in heaven. Mm. You know, the, 20, the very early part of the 20th century in Bowling Green, we did a lot of cruel, mm. terrible things to people here, and I was I was present for most of them since I was a member of the most powerful family in town, and I turns out I have to pay for that in the afterlife. Yes, I remember you... I tried to pay people off so that I wouldn't have to go to hell, in but the they after. just took my money and I wound up here anyway. They still accept currency in the afterlife. Well, I, these were Jacksonian dollars that I had oh. saved up in old aluminum tins from the war. But I thought that they would still be currency when I passed over to the other world. And just didn't make it through the tins, I the didn't. old tins, and the cash. They they took it, but they didn't they didn't send me where <laughs> I wanted to go. Those deep skates. What kind of he heaven is this? Yes, that's right. You, you know, let it. I you even got I even got a notified letter from a local public notary saying that I was destined to go to you know. The upstairs with you know Saint Peter and the angels and the, the playing of the harps and the clouds, and he said, "Oh sure, Gertie, you're gonna get in there." But turns out, no, it's hot. It's as much like it is feels in the studio. It's very hot where I am. I'm so sorry to hear that. I don't trust these notaries either. I'm having issues right here on planet Earth. Well, what, what makes it tolerable is all the streaming services that, that just come with the package. So we just sit around most of the day watching old, you know, through old shows like The Wire or Mayor of East Town. That's a rather newer one than we all liked. What do you think of Is This Cake? Are you a fan? I'm a fan. I never get it right. Well, I'm diabetic, so that's right. So I, I can't watch the show, or else I go into di into hypoglycemic shock. It's like torture for you. It is torture upon torture. And plus, health. I can't eat. I can't eat food anymore. So it's really that's what's right. the point? Same thing with the Great British Baking Show. Why do they even have it on there for us? That doesn't make any sense to me. Using streaming services, but no food. That doesn't seem like that really goes well down well, there. Well, they just—they really you are can't torturing pick you. and choose like you're at a salad bar with these yeah. streaming services. Just all the shows that are on, and that's all you—you you can't take any of them off. Yes, yeah, that's what you're stuck with. Whatever's on the plate tonight, it's yes. White Lotus too. That's right. Yes. Which way you mentioned you have a time crunch, and I'm so sorry to to interrupt you, Aunt Gertrude. I'm I'm so sorry that you're in hell. I mean that you leading the stonings back in the day. I mean, I guess it's a no-brainer that you're down there. You were really the one that thrived. That was people. number one on the list of mm -hmm. why I wound up, you know, in, down there. Hmm. What was All number two? Number two was number two. Uh, I, I'm also familiar with the clawfoot toilet. That's right. And, I mean, I just destroyed that thing over and over again. And <laughs> but it was so bad, they said, you're going to, you can't go and up there with the harps in the clouds you have to go down there with the the blisters and the bubbling skin off your flesh from the intense mm. heat that's what our family's known for number twos and stoning those clawfoot tubs what can i help you so with i'm just Grand okay nephew. so you want me to get to that so we'd like to instill a new curriculum of necrofascism is this what we're doing here necromania necromancing Mancing? okay that's what we're doing here necromancing the stone necromancing uh, have you ever seen that film i have they played it on hbo max where i live now really? 
Yes, it's ca- it's like a retirement village, but it's always 113 degrees, and all you hear are the screams and screams of tormented souls. Followed by the chuckles of the comedy of Mr. Danny the laughter DeVito. Of children, yes. but all the all the children are terrible. They're all, they're all. They have yellow eyes and great big fangs. Just brutal. That mm. sounds glorious in a way, but also brutal. Mm. I, I think it's more brutal. Necromancing. Well, can I help you with so we would like to start curriculum for necromancing, and I'd like here at the university, here at the university, the one that we used to run, the one that we started, the from agriculture scratch, college, the, agriculture the land co- grant university. It's strayed far from its and path. And now they teach necromancy. Here. No, they don't. We need to develop it. Oh. We have statistics to necromancy, and then it goes to nothing. That's far. That's ridiculous. The that's next thing you know, they'll have a. They'll have a degree in supply chain management. Yeah, so that's useless. You're familiar with supply chain management down there. There's many of those supply chain managers wind up down there where I am. Oh, wow. It's all the wow. su- supply chain malfeasance that they cause. Mm, yes. So much malfeasance. So, uh, <laughs> malfeasances. Anyways. We like necromancy, and I'd like to ascend to the throne of Bowling Green State University. Of course, it's your rightful family. place, That's nephew. Right. Yes, you know. Of course you I do. St- I once sat in the throne you. up in the administration, but well, it's not the same administration building anymore. They tore down the old one. Yes, Probably. the different throne, right. too. Do remember, you have to all, you just can't move the headstones. Right. So, That's yes, correct. I was once in the throne. That's... Oh. One of my favorite things about you is that you were very revolutionary for your time. I was. We would see you on that throne. A clawfoot uh, tub. A uh, th- clawfoot throne, I believe it was. This wouldn't fit on my tombstone, but I ushered in first wave feminism. I was one of the original suffragettes. Is that what you were called? Well, no. Mostly I <laughs> was called, uh, yes. Mostly uh, men would walk by me on the street and call me other names that I can't repeat on the radio for per FCC regulations. But my gal pals and I all, all came up with the term suffragettes. <laughs> were you dancers like the Rockettes? Of course suffragettes? we were. Oh. It was the 20s. We were all high on cocaine. And we oh, all wore our short, our short dresses. We all chopped all of our hair off, drank champagne out of our shoes. Is that where Gert from Gert in the Skirt came from? You know it, you bet your bippy. My, 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 great aunt Gertrude. You are a wild child. Oh, I, I, there are some stories I can't even tell you per, per FCC regulations. Even in hell? No, not even in hell. Well, this is just tremendous. Thank you for being here. You I, are I'm welcome. Really I'm hosting this now. Yes, so can you help me with this necromancy? Of course, of course. I I don't know how much time I have in this body. Yes. So I have to, I mean, take advantage while I'm in here and I can talk to you because once it's once the power ends, I'll go back to the other the great plane, beyond. the great beyond. Speaking of great beyond, what do you think of a Beyond Meatball sub? This is plant-based. We're toying with it at the meatball restaurant. We're going to call it the Great Beyond Ball. What, what do you say think you? Yes. What say you, nephew? There's a meatball that has no meat? That's right. Who, what kind of a... What... Are they allowing Bolsheviks in the country now? What is... Well, this sounds... This sounds ludicrous. Half my kitchen staff is Bolshevik. You have got to burn down that restaurant. They're very hard workers. I, well, I will give them that. They do have strong yes. backs. Yes. But they will they will ruin ruin your reputation and mine. They it's love yeah. They yeah. love revolutions. <laughs> they've been known to overtake. They've overtaken three restaurants alone in Bowling Green, but I will not let them have mine. I run with an iron fist. Then you should put that b- cockamamie idea that you have about a b- meatball made of plants. You should toss that into the trash. I don't like hearing that out of Gertrude. What can I help you with, you young know. nephew? <laughs> I've told you numerous times, if you can't help me with the curriculum, then you have no use to me, and I'm very sorry to say that, Aunt Gertrude. Necromancy is a very powerful, powerful, powerful talent. 
it sh if it's if it's in the wrong hands disaster could ensue you're insinuating with terrible terrible tragic consequences you're insinuating that my hands and those of my bolshevik team can't handle necromancy because they will be professors on the curriculum should you choose to go down this path I do. it will be very dark and you will experience great pain and sorrow bring it on but everybody makes choices so if this is what you are choosing to do and you are of your own of your own free will and sound mind okay. then I guess I have no choice as a ghost but to endorse it can you notarize it or pass it of along to another? Of course, I'll yeah, get my naturally. stamp and okay. I'll put my yes. But thank you very much. I can't How's wait. your mother? She's dead. You haven't passed her down there. She's a long. No, dead. I, do you mean she went? You know, I can't. She was such a terrible child, your mother. So willfully obstinate, and these are harsh words for your sister. To niece. Daughter? Daughter? Your mother. My my, mother? my daughter, your mother. Our family tree this is, is wild. Like a, this is like China, the end of Chinatown. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty crazy here in Bowling Green, I'm not going to lie. Our family is a, a unique breed. Well, I, I hope that I've answered all your questions. You did, thank you. I'm, I feel like I must take my leave of you now. My, I'm feeling quite... Oh, Gertie. I'm so tired, listless, lethargic. I'm. I've got to go sit down and put my feet up, take oh. some a leave. Oh, Ed, Gertie, this was delicate. Are you still there? Goodbye. Bad Gertie. Goodbye. Some. <laughs> and Gertie. What happened? Well, how long was I gone? Was I on? Did I? Wow. Did I? It was a I long didn't time. While I was out, did I? No, I hope not. No, you were here. You used the bucket once. Oh, that was it. Okay, yeah, that's what I just feel. Just sort of when Gertie passed, mm -hmm. we, you I, passed. Uh, right, got yeah. it. Okay. Well, so, was it uh, a productive um, yes. uh, seance for I, you? I got my notary. I have <laughs> the approval to introduced necromancy curriculum oh, here great. at Bowling Green State University along with half of my kitchen staff who oh, are great. Bolsheviks. She was she was helpful then. She was very it was a little rough, a little rough going. We had How a little so? bit of a battle. Well, she she was a little, you know, standoffish. We had a little bit of a, a kind of a just, just kind of going at each other a little That's bit. That's how the Norwegians are, the, though. Very much so, mm. yes. We had a, we had Aloof. some confusion about mm. the family. She did avoid spoilers for White Lotus Season 1, which I've not finished yet. Mm. Oh, you know the Season 2 premieres on the tonight. The Season 2 mm. premieres tonight. That's right. I need to get home. And I've also been inspired to, to revisit Chinatown. Uh, the movie, how did that come up? The movie with Jack Nicholson, directed by Roman Polanski? Uh, correct, actually. Um, she related it to our family in some way, and, um, you know, here we are. Do you, have a, uh, do you have an aunt or a cousin who is very much looks like your mother? If so, <laughs> I would ask some questions. Is this is where we're going? This is, this is what she's implying, is that my, my, my family tree is a little... Got some twisted roots. Got some twisted roots mm. in there. By the way, community announcement: leave pickup in the city within the city limits of Bowling Green starts a week from tomorrow, November seventh. So please mulch your leaves and then put them curbside, and the the uh, public works will come and pick them up. Back to your family drama. Yes. Um, so your mother had curbside. A so you got pick your mother had a child very young. Is that what happened? And, and then raised her as her sister mulch and not her daughter. And Yes, correct. Sorry, I was just jotting down your your notes for curbside pickup. Correct. This is what it appears now. Yes, mm. is that my family is just one woman after the next, and babies and children and identical all over the place. Hmm. Well, there have to be some men in there, you know. I mean, for yes, okay, supplying the sure. We know what that means. Is there anyone else that um, you wanted to to try and contact with the? Because today is Seance Sunday, since it's the most powerful Seance Sunday since it's the day before Halloween. It is. It's a very powerful Seance Sunday. Uh, Roy, he's here with me. Oh, okay. But 
perhaps we don't go to, Ro- to towards Roy. Maybe Roy doesn't go towards the light. You know what? We're gonna take a break and then and then decide what yeah, we want to do sure, with Roy. Absolutely. Okay, I'll rub my arm. Um, we're gonna take a break for just a, a minute or two here, and we'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to the Witching Hour. Oh, it just I it just felt a little cold in here. Did you feel that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely felt mm-hmm. that draft. Yeah, yeah. and uh, oh, yeah, the candles are flickering. So, oh, yeah, there so they I go. think there I think there are some spirits. I'm not feeling anything um, uh, that that I am sort of needing to channel, um, but I, I do feel that there are spirits here with us. If there are any spirits here with us, they should make themselves known um, in some way. Give us a sign or. Um, something like that. Uh, oh, wow. Whoa. Did you hear that? Yeah. Stretch wow. and, uh, oh. Wow. Hello. You got me in my morning stretch routine. Uh, hello, ladies. Uh, hello. How are hello. You? hello. Where am I? Hello. What are we doing here? Uh, well, you'd have to tell us. What is your name? My name is Mr. Draxon. Dr. Draxon, actually. Dr. Draxon. Yes. You are a doctor, a medical doctor? This is correct, yes. I specialize in necks and blood. Oh. I'm so also a blood oil tycoon. Oh, oh um, wow, you mm, wear many hats. Many hats, including a five-gallon hat. Where is that accent from? Are you from the continent? So, we're live right now. We are live, we're yeah. We're live on yeah, radio. We're going, okay, because we're going I'm about to divulge some secrets. Oh, this mm. is the show to do it. <sighs> My father's from Transylvania. Okay. Um. Over in Europe. Correct. Okay. Yes, way over in Europe. Beyond Europe, really. His name is Dracula. <gasps> the Dracula? The Dracula. Of the Transylvania Draculas. Yes, you may know him as Nosferatu. Is that still a popular film? Mm-hmm. Well, in this it's day about age? 100 years old, but yeah. Really? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. There's what? been so many. Listen, let me tell you, there's been so many Dracula movies that have been made since Nosferatu. Oh. Like, at least a dozen. That. That rapscallion Bram Stoker didn't get his hands on it, he right? He did. What? That one's really sexy, too. Yeah. A lot of people don't like it, but... Mm-hmm. Who did he have play Dracula? Gary Oldman. Well, he's fantastic. That's mm-hmm. that's actually a br- really brilliant choice. Everybody's taking a, a swing at the Dracula story on screen. Mm-hmm. They even have TV shows. What? They have this one TV show about, about Dracula's. It's nothing but teenagers in, like, South Carolina. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. They all have a diary. It's called The Vampire Diaries. The Vampire yeah. Diaries. Yeah. You know, I did catch one. It's called True Blood. Yeah. Oh, that one's on HBO. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yowza. Yeah. That yeah. was... Very titillating. You could say that again. Absolutely. By the way, Bella Lugosi, good friend. Really? Very you, good friend. Do you talk to him in the in the afterlife? We're on the same bowling team. Oh, that's, oh, that's great. I yes. bet he's a great bowler. He's fantastic. Very oh. clean neck. Oh, I bet. So my father passed down the clean neck. You know, like, love of clean necks. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've tried to fight it. I've tried to fight my accent. I've tried to fight my family history. I've tried to become a doctor and do things for good. My name is now Drax-son. Well, how do you think I got that? Mm -hmm. Dracula's Mm -hmm. son, Mm -hmm. Drax-son. I'm not very creative, Mm -hmm. but I love blood. I love necks. And I have a very good average, 220. Bowling. Oh, that's oh, wow. great. Yes, yeah. You're fighting against a lot of stereotypes, though, I, um, as a Dracula. I know. It, it's brutal, and like I said, I give in many times, but I'm trying to make my own way here on the afterlife. Oh. Yes. And how are you doing that? What's your, you know, what's how are you trying to break away from the Well, mold? the blood oil is really helping. I'm a, we run a, you know, I'm a blood oil tycoon. Does it come out of the ground like oil, or does it come out of necks like blood? A little bit of column, a little bit of gummy. <laughs> it's very confusing because we're combining oil with blood. And as you can imagine, blood comes from the human, oil comes from the ground. Have you ever seen the show Dallas? Yeah. Nothing like that. Oh. Mm. Okay. Completely wrong. Except there's a lot of palace intrigue. Like, it sounds like there's a lot of stuff going on with your family. There is some drama. Are, is your family like the Ewing family? I'd say we're more like the family on Dynasty, oh. which skips my mind, you know, uh, at this time, but probably more Dynasty oriented. They were, that, that show was on ABC. Dallas was on CBS. That's correct, mm-hmm. yes. And then we have the sex appeal of a Melrose place. On Fox. That's right. We did it. In we an covered apartment the bases. complex, yeah. Now you got it. Mm-hmm. Actually, Bella Lugosi lives in my apartment complex with Larry Agman. 
Wow. Yes. Do you think that everyone would the get their own team. place? Oh, all three of you are on the same team. Same team, wow. same apartment complex. Do you guys have a big pool like on Melrose Place? We do. It's filled with blood. Oh, of mm. course. That goes without saying. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> sure. But people seem to really take to it. It's, it's very nice. And it's, you know, always hot or always skimpy, mm. always having a good time. Sure. And then Wednesday nights we bowl. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, it must be exciting for you to Very kind of, exciting. you know, be out of your like normal everyday kind of rut. It, it's yes, uh, yes, very exciting being in the studio rather than my pool of blood at Melrose Place. Yes, but uh, no, I kid, I kid. It's a state of the art studio yes. though. The cool, the Cooleen Center, you it's know, very it's nice. lots yes. of technology. A lot of money went into this place. Mm, cutting edge. It looks fantastic. It's very, very. Have you very seen these fabulous. microphones? These microphones are delicious. Mm. They are really amazing. ASMR. Is that what they call it? That's what the, yeah, that's that's what right. the, the kids call it. Mm-hmm. That. I'm sure okay. there's a Dracula ASMR out there. Of course. Yeah, there must be. Sure. If not, you should start it. it. Get in on that? Yeah. With oh, Bitcoin? Yeah. Is that still a thing? Oh, yeah. I don't think so. No, we, I oh, the I'm getting conflicting reports. Oh, I, yeah. No Bitcoin? Hmm. I'm sure a lot of people who know what's going on with Bitcoin are existing in the realm where you are now. In my so. afterlife. Yes, yeah, I'll yeah. check with Larry Hagman mm-hmm. later. He seems to be very up to speed on sure. those things. Yes, mm-hmm. very, very smart, very yeah. wise. Who else are some of your friends in the other in the afterlife? Uh, so we have, um, oh shoot, what is his name? It escapes me right now. Judas? Uh, from the Bible? Yes. Judas from Iscariot. The, mm-hmm. 30 pieces of yeah. silver. Ripped though. Oh, ripped to shreds. Mm. He lived he, in the desert. You know, they get real tan, carrying around all that lumber. And Falling. guess what? On my bowling team. Oh, wow. wow. What is he, what's his average? 300. He's of fantastic. Wow. I know. Which means, wow. he, for his average to be 300, that means he every has to game. get 300 every game. We huh? do play seven is fine, which means every seven pins is actually a strike, which is, it's kind of crazy. We, you hmm. know, we decided to have a little bit of fun here in the afterlife. Sure. What are rules? Yeah. What, what do we need rules for? That's what put us here in the right. first place. We don't mm. believe in rules. So what did you come up here to tell us? Well, I just wanted to let you know that it's open mic night tonight. <gasps> yeah, so if you guys would like to come down, I'm actually working on some new material, some new characters down there. And, you know, my dad might be in the audience, so I'm a little nervous, I'm a little sweaty, my neck's a little dirty. So what's your comedy like? Is it like a Seinfeld or like Tom Segura, mostly stories, or it's like observational? What What's it? the deal? It's that you know. It's your your Jerry Seinfeld stuff. You know. Do you want to give our you, audience you, like a just a like a minute yeah, or two from your okay? Type let's 15. do it. Hi everybody. How's it going? Good to be here. Good to be here tonight. Who flew in here from Alaska? You over there, Eskimos? Oh, you guys, you're so great. You're clean. You're nice. Good clean neck. Larry, my friend Larry's in the audience over here. Larry, how you doing? You look good, baby. You look sharp. And then we go into a little accent like this. I, this. I like to bring in a little bit of, you know, we're bringing a little Sinatra over here. Yeah, what's going on? What's going on, huh? So the corner piece of your stand-up yeah. is your impression of Frank Sinatra? Is, is Frank Sinatra doing Jerry Seinfeld. Oh. Yes. Huh. When you do the laundry, if you have blood on your shirt, I think that might be the biggest concern, huh? Boom. Like that. What's the deal with airline food, huh, baby? Ah, what's you know, the deal with the black box? Why don't they just make the whole plane out of the black box? There is a corporation in this realm called Netflix, and they give comedy really? specials to stand-ups. And I think that you should get in touch with them as soon oh, as possible. Sure. Get an hour-long special on Netflix. Everyone will know your name, and especially because you have such name recognition with Thank who you. your father mm-hmm. was or is. Um, yeah, you'll probably make it really big. Do you think I'll get to meet Gary Oldman? Oh, yeah. He's oh. a huge comedy fan. Big fan. Did you, did you watch Air Force One recently? Still holds up. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Still holds up. Sure. It is fantastic. Mm. <clears throat> That's really good. That's what I tell all my clients. What is your What is your fam- favorite genre of film? My favorite genre of film, <sighs> you know, it's not really popular with my bowling team members, and I'm a, kind of ashamed to say it. But we're live right now, right? We are, we are live still on the live. Yep, although I'm, I'm very much dead. Boom! Who's got that over there? We got you drums. You should put in that there? into your. Se- we don't have a drummer. Okay. You should put that in your set, Thank though. You. Yeah. It, we're live. 
No, I'm very much dead. That is good. That's really good. Let me write that down. My favorite genre is rom-com. I oh, knew really? it. Yeah, oh. you could tell that's where I was going because mm-hmm. I was a little ashamed of it, but I'm, you know, yeah. that's what it is. Especially mm. anything with Kate Hudson. Mm. Oh, you're Kate I Hudson mean. fan, yeah. huh? How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Oh, for wow. Sure. For sure. Yeah. How to Lose Your Whole Tear Ducks in Two Hours. Mm. That's basically what it's like for me down there. Preach. It's bad. Mm-hmm. In a good way. I like to cry. I'm v- I, I'm okay with being vulnerable. I've found that it's really helped You me. are the most emotionally available Dracula that I've ever met. This is true. That's something that my mother really passed on to me because my dad was kind of closed off. Is it because, um, because of the great love that you lost? Yes. Do you want to talk about that? You may not be ready to talk about the great love that you no, lost. No, no, we can, we can, we can talk about it. My puppy, mm-hmm. Philbert. He was the most beautiful basset hound. I've he ever was seen. the most beautiful basset hound. Those ears, that attitude, mm. that neck. Even with the pets, I look for a clean neck. I would never bite into Philbert, my basset hound. Then how did he die? He was hit by a car. Oh, were you driving the car? No. You know who it was? Larry Hagman? Larry Hagman. <laughs> he used to drive he used to drive very poorly on the set of Dallas too. He he killed Barbara Bel Geddes. He took out many a dog. Oh it, it gets me choked up thinking about it. You know that whole thing where they thought that Bobby was dead? Larry Hagman actually hit him with his car and he had to spend three months in the hospital over the summer hiatus. They didn't know if Dallas was coming back. That's why they had that big ha- that big uh, yes, cliffhanger. I, yes, huh? I remember. Yes. Oh, Patrick boy. Duffy. Fantastic. He's still going at it, isn't he? What He's do you mean by going like at it? <laughs> career. <laughs> his career is tremendous. It, oh, sure. Yeah. It's on fire. Uh, yeah. That's what I've heard. Okay. I mean, sure. We can go with that. Um... Uh, yes, go on. Your, your dog. Yes, Larry and tragic, I. Tragic, tragic ending peace. to that story. Oh boy, how it must have taken so much out of you. It did. It took a lot out of me. Yes. Um. <sighs> Luckily, I have my blood oil tycoon. Or Who, I'm a tycoon. My your, blood oil industry. What's your biggest market sector for the blood oil? Is it young people? Is it seniors? Well, any sort of good market is seniors because mm. we just dupe them. We have an amazing telemarketing um, team that mm. can just really fool people into giving us money. It's what are the benefits fantastic. of blood oil? Why is it beneficial? Well, it's, uh, you know, if you're familiar with, like, uh, you know, wa- spring water or something you smell. Yeah, mm. yes. And you sell that. Um, we sell it late night on television here. And it's blood oil. Blood oil will help clean your skin and open your pores and make you feel, you know, rejuvenated and youthful and ready to take on the world. And it's just a clean, crisp neck. And mm. it's mm-hmm. it's really, those are the benefits of blood oil. And also, you're, you know, everything flows better, if you know what I mean, from many directions. Uh, you, it keeps you regular. I think we I think we're picking up what you're putting down. Okay. We understand okay. what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The regulation of your system. That's yes. fine. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, how do you extract the blood oil from the ground? So the the blood portion we use, I use my teeth and, and go into a neck. Really. I try not to do animals. That's why they call them veins. That's why they call them. <gasps> That's why they call them veins. Sharp cookie. Oh. Yeah. That's very, very good. Can I use that? Of, sure. All right. Sharp veins. And then the oil, we just, just traditionally... Are you familiar with the film There Will Be Blood? Yes. Mm. Okay, mm-hmm. it's nothing like that. Oh, oh so there's okay. no milkshakes. No milkshakes. Okay. We don't have that down here. We have blood shakes. Right. Tracks. That's on Thursday nights. Sure. You know who makes the best blood shake? Mm-hmm. Larry. Is it Larry Hagman? It's Larry Hagman. Oh, wow. Larry. He yeah. is tremendous. Wow, what a jack of all trades, a Larry of all trades. Yes, well, after he hits people with his car, it kind of like smooths things over oh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. keeps things, it so keeps things going. Mm-hmm. But that's on Thursday night. So, yes, we, we mine it in the ground, and that's where we get the blood. It's actually something my father started. The one thing that I've hung on is is his oil. Like fossil fuels. Technique. And the Correct. the bones from dinosaurs make oil. Is this blood old blood from dinosaurs? Is it dinosaur blood? It is. You got it. You're on top. Are you familiar with the 
film and book Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's my favorite. Nothing like that. Oh. No. Completely lies. That's disappointing. That's It's lies? It's lo- all lies. The all amber, the trapped in amber? All lies. Oh, wow. Fantastic, you know, film. Hollywood. Oh. Are you familiar with, well, you must be, Jeff Goldblum? Of oh, course. Yes. Great, great actor. We Perfect. love him. He's fantastic. You know you know who loves Jeff Goldblum? He's a big fan of Jeff Goldblum down here. Is it Larry Hagman? Is it Larry Hagman? It's Gary Hagman, oh. his brother. Oh, oh. You thought you I was going me. with Larry Hagman. You got me. Uh-huh. Yeah, so anyways, um, it's sort of, yes, dinosaur blood. We boil the blood from dinosaurs. We preserve it in kind of like an amber casing. So that's true so yeah, in the they movie. Got that, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They no, got that nothing movie. like that. Wrong. Oh. oh. In fact, I kept a little memento for myself, and you see it in my cane over here. Like it's from on the, the top. movie Memento? No. I don't okay. think Completely it's wrong. Like that, yeah. Okay. All right. Is that with Gary Oldman? No, that's with Guy Pierce. It is. Yes. Who was in also in a movie about Hollywood with Russell Crowe, L.A. Confidential, and Kim Basinger. It's all connected. It's all coming around. Mm. Saying a lot of names. And yeah. Guy yeah. Pierce was directed by Chris Nolan and Memento, who directed Gary Oldman, Oldman and in Batman Begins in the Dark Knight trilogy. Wow. wow. And I thought Kevin Bacon was. The six degrees, but it's Gary Oldman. It's Gary Oldman. It's Gary fantastic. Oldman. Yeah. That's really good. But yes, that's how we do it. So fascinating. Yes. What are your plans to, to other to to do while you're up here occupying this human person? Disco club? Do you have open mic night tonight? Isn't Grumpy's? Sunday going nights on? are typically not an it's open a mic tent. night. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you know what though? If you go downtown to the to the uh, southwestern Scandinavian meatball restaurant, yeah. tonight's the plant-based things. meatballs though, so you get a different crowd show up. For sure. Um, but they have they have like a poetry slam, so it's kind of the same thing. Oh. You can probably just massage your material a little bit, and, and you'll fit right in. I could work in my Jerry Seinfeld type. Material into this poet is what you're saying. Sure, yeah, okay. absolutely. His his material especially translates really well to spoken word poetry. I love that because of the cadence of his, you know. Yeah. Do you ever yeah, notice yeah, this? Yeah, Do you yeah, ever yeah, notice yeah. that? Yeah, there's kind of a sing song equality. That's quality to it. Very yeah. good. Will mm-hmm. you be down there, the um, open mic night, poet <clears throat> night? Well, I I mean, I hadn't planned on it because I was going to try and get out of here because tonight is the season two premiere of White Lotus on HBO. Oh, I heard about that. You mentioned it. You know, True Blood is also an HBO show. HBO is actually subsidizes this show, so we try and give them plugs whenever we can. It's not TV. (laughs) It's HBO. You know what? You should have been a marketing genius because that's actually Mm -hmm. what they went with. That's that's brilliant. Yeah, it is. You know who's a marketing genius? Who? Larry Hagman. I thought you were going to say Barry Hagman. (laughs) Barry Hagman, his cousin. Yes, he's half poodle. You know, HBO has a show called Barry, but it's not about Barry Hagman. It also airs on Sunday nights, but not right now. That sounds fantastic. It's I'm pretty very great. Interested. Won a lot, a lot of awards. A lot. Oh, really? But Tremendous. Back to you. Is Gary Oldman on that show? No, he's not. Not mm-hmm. yet. Who knows? They haven't announced the next season cast. Yeah, that's right. What's your situation like? Uh, you know, the romantic situation. Yeah, I mean, many women are attracted to Draculas mm-hmm. because of the whole connection between blood and pain and possession. And yes, what's I'm your aware. Thought? Well, I have a lady down here, a lady <laughs> friend. She's actually, she's tied up right now because White Lotus is starting. And so why is she tied? You mean she's occupied no, or she's physically, oh, no, literally right. tied? She's not tied up. She's, yes, occupied. Occupado. Is that? That's the, yeah, that's what you say when someone's on the... Occupied. On the, right, on the Occupado. toilet. Occupado. Mm-hmm. Yep. Number two here. Mm. Well, blood oil. Bucket. Bucket. Yes, it making me go. I had blood oil last night. So she's preparing for the season she's two She's preparing, f- yes, mm-hmm, of White Lotus. She's ready to go. She's primed and poised for White Lotus to begin. They have all the streaming channels down there right here. Yes, Everything. all but Paramount Plus. Yeah, that's a yes. shame, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know what's going on in Yellowstone. Is it? I've heard it's fantastic. It's like a modern-day Dallas. That's I what haven't Larry watched. I also don't have Paramount Plus, so I haven't watched. So we, L- Larry has an illegal cable hookup to uh, Paramount Plus. <laughs> and so after know? our bowling nights on Wednesday, yeah. Larry we go will... go out for tacos, ta- come home. Yes, tacos. And we stay at Larry's place. Bella comes over 
and mm. we all sit and we watch and yeah we kind of get that yellowstone stream in there but don't tell anyone sure okay yeah. this is live like really this is live we're live right yeah, now we're, we're live right now my goodness you it's didn't tell me we were live um, I th- well, I think I did. You brought it up a few times. Yeah, I, ten- I tend to just ramble and go in and out of accents. It's just, it's just I'm trying to work on my, you know. What other accents game. are you working on? A New York accent. You talk like this. Isn't this how they still talk? No. Isn't it good? That's great. Yeah. Yes, you know what? Thank you. You should listen. You should get in. Go on Broadway and play stickball. Is that how they talk up there now? You should get on a bus immediately and go directly to Times really? Square. Because if you showed up with that accent, you would run New York City. You'd fit right in. Yeah. I could run New York Absolutely. City and you would be, be an elected executive. Mayor. Absolutely. You know, they're having, a pro- they're having a crisis with rats right now. Really? And I feel like if you showed up with that voice, whatever you said, whatever you told them to do about the rats, they would elect you mayor. Hey, get those rats out of here. Yeah, just something like that. Something like that, no, yes. Yeah, I think that would work. You does Don Brokaw still authority. live in New York? He does. You I could speak Don Brokaw. Yes, you speak with such authority uh, with that dialect. Hey, you can't be doing that around here. So confident. Yeah. Secure. What are you doing, little rat? Yeah. You want to want things down here? If I were a rat, That's I would be so scared if you just started talking. I, I would just ru- I would run to Connecticut, the n- next state. I would keel over yeah. if I were a rat. Do you want to hear my Connecticut accent? Yeah, I've of course really I do. I've really been working on it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Hey, welcome to Connecticut. Come on up here. Oh, wow. So you could see the difference, though. So you could yeah. hear it from New York what a to vast Connecticut. Array of, Isn't of Northeast, yeah. You, yeah. It looked like I was a different person. Where'd you learn to do that? Larry Hagman's really good. He's really good with accents. He doesn't just do Texas accents, but he really you brings know, I it. I heard in. that there was a dialect coach on the set of Dallas, but I thought it was all Texas accents. Yes, yeah, no. Uh, Larry actually threw the dialect coach under his car and he took care of that and Larry took it from there and it's really fantastic hmm. was Larry Hagman ever held accountable for any of these it sounds like at, le- at the very least assaults that he committed on the set of Dallas if not manslaughter yeah well Oxford. he's down here with me so oh oh I guess yeah. in the end he it, did it, pay. it did kind of catch up with karma him. is Although, the real yeah. I know where you're going with that one. I can't say that one. But you're very shocked. I don't want the bad karma that comes no, from saying the that. end of that. Uh, but yeah, it is yeah. pretty nice down there. We got Blood Pool and yeah. Melrose Place style. All the streaming services except, except Paramount, Paramount Plus. Plus. Yeah. Except yeah. La- at Larry's. <clears throat> Remember that. And all the bowling you guys do. That sounds fun. Bowling. Mm. Yes. So what's the ba- what's the downside to being down there? There is no downside. There's got to be at least one thing. <laughs> You know, it's like you're going in for your performance review. Everyone has some area of improvement. Mm. This is true. This is true. Well, <laughs> we have very strong convictions on who we are down here. So A lot of integrity? We, yeah, and it's hard to self-judge. It's hard to, you know, be constructive criticism on oneself. That's kind of what put us here. So I guess one of the bad things is that we have a meeting with our overlord every month, Mm. And he puts us through this training. What's his name? Steve. Okay. Oh. Yes. Uh, what's his last name? Or just his last initial? Do you know? R. R. Okay. You can take it from there. Okay. Can I take it from there? Sure. Anyway, Are you, you taking want to take it? it? Okay. You can right. take it. I'll take it. He has a very just loose, free-flowing last name. Steve R. Anyways, we meet with him. Mm-hmm. Do you just want me to tell you the last name? Can I guess on his last name? You could guess on his he last name. He said it was free flowing. Is it Steve? I see, see where you went there. I think you were missing one tat at the end. One more time. Oh. Well, I'm, I wasn't sure how to pronounce it. So. But go on. It's okay. Don't be scared. <laughs> That's it. I That's it. it was Steve rat ta 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 Anyways, he would be a comparable to your HR person. Okay. Ah. And so the downside is we have to go in there and we have to be vulnerable and express our feelings. And, and we how, don't how does we that don't go feel for you? it's bad. It's brutal. Mm-hmm. Really? It's, yes, I open up and um But you're you're in touch with so much of your pain about your dog dying. Yes. 
I am. And that's really, that's the work of Steve Rat. He's helped me get to this point. He's helped me open up. He's helped me realize that my love of, of Kate Hudson movies and, and of Gary Oldman mm-hmm. and accepting that, that no talent hack Bram Stoker, you know, made a fool of my family in the Nosferatu name. Did you try suing? Suing? It's a, yeah. you know, there's a court of law, and you can bring forth a, a civil suit really? against someone and say, I Like She Hulk. Yes. That's what we're watching right now, actually. Oh, okay. We're really into She Hulk oh, yeah. down okay. here. Yes. Yeah, so you can b- go before a judge and say, I was harmed. My family was harmed because of the depiction by this filmmaker. Bram Stoker. Right, yeah. and then you can ask for damages. And you can ask for punitive damages or um, compensatory damages. And then the judge throws a bag of money at you. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I always win, I imagine, in this scenario. Because I'm not used to losing. Yes. Many, many yeah. people sue. Okay, that's really yeah. good. Computative, punitive compensatory damages. To compensate or to punish, yeah. And I could mm-hmm. get millions of this, right? Oh, at least. The, oh, wow, that yeah. could come in handy down yeah. here. We do have there's a lot probably, of lawyers. I was going to say, there's probably a ton of lawyers down yep. there. That's right. Well, I'll have to look into that. Bram Stoker, watch <coughs> out. Mm. I'm, I'm going to take him down. You could probably sue him for defamation or oh, maybe for even sure. copyright infringement. Defecation? That's for the bucket. Oh, That's the, the bucket. Oh. Or the clawfoot tub. This is in the court of law. Defamation means to be defamed. Oh, they make me look like a fool. Uh, is that, that's what it sort is. Of, yeah. So they make my character and call my character into question. They impugn your yeah. character. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Do I have to get dressed up for this, or can usually, I wear my cape? Usually, you're, you're advised to Are wear a suit still and a tie. Um, uh, for superheroes, yeah. But not just the regular everyday Joe, Joe man. Um, Joe I don't know Schmo. too many Joes who wear capes. No, I'm sure there's there's a GI Joe that probably has a cape accessory, but I don't know if they still sell it. They don't make that anymore. So capes not in. Not they in. don't make GI Joe anymore. Is that what you mean? They, they, uh, they don't make G.I. Joe anymore? I don't, I'm asking you. Are you asking me? No, I was asking, asking you. you. They don't make. Oh, I don't know. They don't make? Do they make? I don't know. You huh. know who used to make was my bassetant. Oh. Yes. That, I can still sense that that pain is still so real. It's real. It's, it's yeah. real. It's, it's a really soft point between me and Larry. Bella has to step in often and kind of soothe things over. He wears a cape. Yeah, you should does. ask him the cape question. How does he pull it off? How does Bella pull off the right. cape? Yeah, yes, yeah. I think that's a good good question. I'll yeah. bring up to Mr. Lagosi. Mm-hmm. Draculas, they're just like us. They are, yes. But is that it's true, though? I fe- mm-hmm. have a feeling that you're very much not like us. Meaning humans, right? You're not human. Oh, I thought you were asking if I was like Dracula, which I am because he's my father. Right, but mm-hmm. th- that's different than Sky and I are humans. <laughs> So Draculas are a supernatural creature. We though. are. Yes, okay. we're from the great beyond. We survive on blood. Yes. You're sort of like a zombie, I guess, in like the <laughs> textbook definition. You're undead. You uh, feed off. Yes, a little bit. A zombie that doesn't like garlic. Oh, is what we that's would a great distinction as. to make. Yes, and yeah, we're also very garlic. suave and debonair. Oh. So that's you know. Do you color your hair? Is that Grecian formula that's in your hair, or are you? No, that's uh, car oil. Uh, oh, like oh. motor oil. Yeah, so I guess I do color it, but not in the traditional sense that you think I color my hair. And I where use do you motor get your, oil. Where's the, this outfit is very um, shiny. Uh, this is Forever 21. Oh. Huh. Which is like my age. Where that's the prime uh. age I look Forever 21. You do look right. very young, but Thank how you. old are you in Dracula years? I am uh, 211 years old. That's really mm-hmm. old. Dad wow. is four... One one, and I'm that, and the reason I, I know that because I'm always like, Dad, what's the four one one? Clever, yeah, uh, and then he beats you. me. Uh, oh, okay, that's sorry. more yeah. emotional pain, for more you drama, it. which I take up with Steve mm. in HR. He right. handles that. Well, what what do you want to leave our listening audience with? What's what's a takeaway from you know your work, your life's work? Monday night. 8 p.m. Open mic. Come down. Is it a down. bringer show, or is there t- is there a minimum two drink minimum, or? Yes, uh, two drink minimum. Come okay. down. You know, uh, it's college age. Use your college ID. Come down there. You get discount. Discount drinks. Larry's gonna be working the bar. Oh, we wow. all just pretty much we work there as well. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'd like to leave them with. He'll have his blood shakes. He'll have his hat. 
He looks very sharp. He mixes the milkshakes in his 10-gallon hat. Mixes it in his 10-gallon hat. Wow. Yes, and he has a little siphon that comes out the bottom. Wow. And then also, Friday is Hawaiian shirt Friday night. So come yeah. out. It doesn't matter your complexion. If you're very pale, come out. Look sharp. You know, we're trying to have fun. We're trying to loosen things up. We're trying to open the club up to more people and make it more relaxed, a younger vibe. You know, mm. people like 210 and under. That's what we're going for. for sure. So just really loosen it up. And then once every month, Taco Tuesday. <gasps> and I don't, I don't need to tell you guys how big Taco Tuesday is done. You should have it more than beyond. just once a month. You should have it on a weekly basis. We should do it every Tuesday. Yeah. That's a lot of taco meat. That's a lot of deals I have to make with the mm. with Taco Bell. Oh, mm. it comes from Taco mm. Bell? You don't... Naturally. Oh, well, well yeah. that's a sad Down ending here. to that story. Yeah. yeah tragic. Well, um... Crunch Wrap Supreme mm. is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Is that is that, uh, is that what you want to leave our audience with? And Bowling on Wednesdays come out. Check us out. We got the league championship next week. Did you seek the answers... Did you get the answers you were seeking when you entered this realm? You interrupted my morning stretch or evening stretch. So That's this true. is everything over the past 40 minutes has been delightful. And I hope your listeners enjoy it. I hope they tune in. Uh, this has just been, you know, really, really eye-opening to me. Fantastic. Larry, Bella, everybody, if you're out there tuning in, thank you so much. This has been amazing. My career is bigger than it's ever been. And I'm just so happy. Dad, I love you. I know it's been rough. Your birthday's next month. I'll be there. You know it. That's it. Well, thank you so much. Thank Um, you. You know, um, when we have seances in the studio, we never know who's going to show up. And it's always such a delightful surprise. And you especially, with your European continental flair, have been one of my favorite seance guests ever. Do so. they still do the wild and crazy guys? Is that still a thing around here? Um, you know, that's kind of that. I think that's seen its day. Hey, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. really? Yeah, that was about that was about forty five years ago, well, maybe forty six. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, human years are different than Dracula years. Say. You know, it's so a long time. Yeah, yeah that just came down the pipe down here. Oh I'm wow! Streaming. Yeah, we have Peacock. Oh, so we get all, all the old the episodes, old years yeah. and else. All right. They're fantastic. Okay. Well, um, oh, Sky, oh. did you? S- okay. Oh. I think, I think this the spirits left the studio. Okay. Okay. I think, which is kind of perfect timing because we're right up almost against ten o'clock. Huh. Wow, what a crazy show it was this week. Huh? Yeah, yeah, we talked man. to so many. I just go out the back here. Oh, oh, you're, you're still, still here. here. Yes. Oh, the okay. back door. Sure. Use. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, make sure that it's shut tight behind you. Sometimes and, it, and then yeah, yeah. and lock. Uh huh. I do push that the myself. You do that. And then yeah. push it on the inside it and then it locks. It locks from the other side. So, so I'll be okay. Out. Mm-hmm. There's okay. a code on I the just door. Just, just yeah. yeah just shut the door. Shut. Pull the door shut hard, and it'll lock, and you'll and be we're fine. Good to go. Yep. Okay. All right. I was in a broom closet before, so. Oh, oh, it's down the hall to it's the di- right. Right. That's yeah, a common mistake. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thanks again. Monday night. Okay. 